good afternoon and happy Salat. You are on this channel. Think big, live together. Uh, because today is Sabbath, my topic is about um, spiritual. So the title here is Think Big. K text is found in Genesis 18:14. Is anything too hard for the Lord? Okay, this will be the same questions that I'll be going to leave to you and to me after this message is done. This was the same question that the angel told Sarah when sometime. And Abraham and Sarah were resting in their great tents which under a big tree. There were strangers who were coming and because Abraham was a very hospitable person, he invited them to come and rest a while and then um, we were preparing food for them. It was their hospitality to strangers during their times that then whoever will come to their place they're going to invite them and uh, feed them and then let them rest for a while and then let them go because if they're, they're from a far place <coughs> there are only people there are some people who will be hospitable enough to invite them and that was what Abraham did he invite them and uh, the stranger says, okay, do as you said. Well, they were talking, and, and Sarah was preparing their food. Uh, she told, the stranger told Abraham, by this time, during springtime when I came back, Sarah will be holding a son. And Sarah was listening inside the tent, and she laughed, what? Am I going to have a son at my very old age and not having had menstruation right now? And then the stranger said, Oh, why did Sarah laugh? But then when Sarah went up, No, I didn't laugh. No, you did laugh. But I tell you, I will come back here and we'll see you holding a son. And, uh, that story from Abraham after a year Sarah was holding a son by the name of Isaac so the question is is anything too hard for the Lord you can answer it for your own lives we need to be broader and think bigger with our plans Maybe plans in our life here on earth or maybe plans for reaching other people and tell them about the gospel telling them about the good news uh, well, when just Jesus was here on earth his work is to go forward from cities to cities village to village is going forward into uh, people around and they have been reaching people on the streets and healing them and even evangelizing those people up on a tree like what he did to Zacchaeus Zacchaeus uh, was a tax collector but when he heard about Jesus he got so interested to see Jesus in person and one time when the people were reacting to the presence of Jesus in the area he has to go with the crowd he left his job and starting coming in front but because he was a stout man and he cannot reach other tall men from behind he really cannot see 
Jesus. So, he did have to think bigger. What can I do to, in order to see this Jesus that they said? And going, running, running forward, seeing the way where Jesus would really be going, he saw a sycamore tree. And what he did is, he climbed that sycamore tree in order to have a full view of Jesus when coming that way. And the result is when Jesus came to that place, he looked up and told Shaqeus, come down and I'm going to dine in your house. And I was destroyed. Shaqeus not only looked at Jesus' face, but also knowing that Jesus can do something for his life. And in fact, when Jesus told him, you have sinned against the people, you have robbed them of their money because of the tax corruption that was going on at that time, he said, oh, I'm going to return the money that I have robbed from them, I will return them. We we're not told how did Zacchaeus return the money. <clears throat> but we are told that it's not only Zacchaeus who was converted, but also the whole family as a whole. It was a good news for the family. Sharing Jesus to other people making it as an obligation and later on becomes a delight for sharing the good news actually becomes our passion and that passion give us um, reward for when that person we've, work, we've been working for accept Jesus <clears throat> he or she will be part of the kingdom that God has been preparing for each and every one who will be faithful to him when I was in college I have a friend by the name of Lera actually she was richer compared to my status as a student, she's the daughter of a major in the army. Actually, uh, the father is the corps commander of the school where I came from before we being classmates in the university. And then her mother is a government employee. So sometimes you have to go to their place, and uh, sometimes she has to go to our place. And we do many things, the homework, the assignment, the research that we're doing, we do it together. So, one time, I said, why won't you come with me on the Sabbath? What Sabbath? She really don't know about the Sabbath, because she's a Roman Catholic. A Sabbath, we worship God on the Sabbath. That is the seventh day of the week, we go to church. You can go with me. And then she said, mm, Okay, no problem. I can go with you. So that was the start. And uh, he had, she attended Sabbath with me. And uh, right after that, every Saturday, every Sabbath, she went with me. And her parents really did not even know because she know but when she will be she will be not allowed to attend it she told her parents. And later on uh, I did not give her a Bible study. I did not uh, do something that will encourage him to be a seventh day Adventist, but she herself later on wanted to be baptized and uh, 
actually she married one of our church members and the were and then belong to the family of the Adventists. Uh, her husband is uh, a member of the uh, Adventist family. And uh, later on, when we graduated in college, uh, we're not, uh, we've been separated for a time because of work in Zurich and Hong Kong and me here in the Philippines. But uh, we gave a change of uh, messages during this time and uh, reported about what's happening in her life, in my life. And uh, she told me, oh, thank you for inviting me. That's Sabbath. Because I am now, I have now a seventh year with his family with my husband and children. So it's just nice to hear the stories with you. Like, I really don't expect that uh, she will be an Adventist like me just because I invited him to the church. But as of now, she is in Canada with her children because the husband died. And they like me, was also a widow. And uh, she enjoyed life. She enjoyed to be in the Seventh-day Adventist faith. Sharing the gospel to the people, to their friends, to their families, to their relatives and more is a delight. If we can see the fruits of our labor, we're not in vain. <clears throat> and uh, the most winnable persons that we can share the message of salvation, the gospel, the love of Christ, for humanity is no other than our friends, our relatives, our family, our workmates, and neighbors, maybe. But doing this thing, in doing things like this, we're not doing it alone. For we, we should always remember that Jesus is working with us and the Holy Spirit is working in the lives of people we are in contact of or share, share the gospel and work wonders in their hearts and later the Holy Spirit will convict them to accept Jesus as their personal Savior and here as we do this, we are much more convinced that working, sharing the gospel to the world is a delight. It's an accomplishment that only we have done. It. We have the bottom line is that we have uh, tried our very best to share the message to the people around us. And uh, we are blessed if we have that positive result. The people also join and accept Jesus as their personal Savior. But if they're not, we're told, just not okay. Maybe not now, but later. God has plans for each and every one of us. And as what we have studied this morning for our lessons about the Bible as part of the history, it will always be history repeated in our lives. And the miracles, deliverance, and the answered prayers that they have had uh, from the Bible characters will be repeated in our times. The miracles that they have experienced will be experienced by us if we are doing this work. We are sharing this love of Jesus to the people around us. And we have the promise that was given to us in Matthew 20, 19 to 20. 
safe there. We are there for and preach the gospel to the world. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. And tell them what I have making them disciples, I mean, making them disciples from all nations. And lo, the promises, I will be with you wherever you go, even unto the very end of this age. It was the promise, it was the commission, and it was the promise that God is giving us for you and for me. So they said to the 70 athletes of all over the world, this is my message, and um, I hope that you will be challenged to do your part, and me to do my part too, in sharing the good news to the world, that Jesus died for you and for me, in order, in order for you and for me to be saved. And later when God comes the second time, we will be one of those who will shout, there is our God for whom we have been waiting for. Thank you very much for watching and God bless us.